For the longest time, I thought that when you put slash bin slash sh at the top of a shell script, that referred to either your default shell or more importantly to a POSIX shell. And it turns out that on some distros, specifically those that are Debian based, as well as some others out there, it actually does refer to a POSIX shell. The problem is that on Arch Linux, it actually doesn't. In Arch Linux, slash bin slash sh is actually a symlink to bash. And this might not seem like a problem. The issue with this though is there's actually two problems with this. The first one is that if you have slash bin slash sh symlink to bash, you'll be able to do things like put bashisms in scripts that were intended to be POSIX compliant. And the problem with that is that if you ever then go and migrate to an actual POSIX shell like Dash, for example, that we're using today, all your scripts will break. So if you are going to be using bashism in a script, make sure you actually mark it as a bash script. Don't use slash bin slash sh or slash user slash bin slash sh. Actually mark it as a bash script or a zsh script or a fish script, anything like that. The other problem is that bash, at least compared to dash, is incredibly slow. Now, it's still a shell, so it's still really quick. Same with zsh. Zsh is a really slow shell, but it's still a shell. On older hardware though, there is a little bit of a noticeable difference between Bash and Dash. I did notice it back when I was using my laptop. On this new device here, on my new desktop, it's not as noticeable, but it's really easy to fix, so we might as well just go and do it. So let's go have a look at my main screen and look at how to actually do this. Obviously, the first thing you're going to want to do is actually make sure you install Dash. So we can do that by doing sudo pacman-s and go dash, or on whatever distro you're using, use your package manager. Now, I've already got dash installed, and the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do here, or at least after we've installed it, is actually check what slash bin slash sh is actually a sim link to. So we can do this in a couple of ways. Obviously, you can use like ls dash l and look at your sim links like that. So say, for example, my bash profile here is a sim link to somewhere in my repos directory. But there's an easier way to do it. There is actually a dedicated program to look at sim links, and this program is called readlink. So let's say we do readlink on my .zshrc file. As we can see, this is actually located in my .files directory, and then it's called .zshrc in there. But we can also use this on programs. So on Arch Linux, you have two places where programs are installed, slash bin and slash user slash bin. Slash user slash bin, I believe, is actually just a sim link to slash bin. I presume it's there for legacy reasons. I presume it's also on other distros, but some distros might not have both of them. So we're going to be using slash bin because that's just less characters to write, basically. If we check the sim link for that, so slash bin slash sh, as you can see, I've got it sim link to dash. Now, by default on Arch Linux, this will actually say bash. The way we fix this is actually really easy. So let's just look at the man page for LN and see what options we need to use. The first option we need is the dash F option. This will basically force it if a destination file already exists. And obviously there's already gonna be a sim link there. So yes, something will already exist. We need to use the dash lowercase s option to actually make the symbolic link. And we need to use the dash capital T option. Now, make sure you be very, very careful with this because you can very easily break your system when you're using this command. What I mean by this is if we were to do ln slash, uh, ln dash sf capital T and go from slash bin slash sh to slash bin slash bash, do not run this command. What you'll be doing here is creating a sim link from slash bin slash sh to bash. So you're gonna create a sim link to the sim link and you have a recursive sim link and you will break your system. Do not run this command. What we want to do is put slash bin slash bash or slash bin slash dash on this side. So we're gonna be doing it with bash just so I can change it back over to show you the difference and then go to slash bin slash sh. This will be safe to run. So if we run this, you'll need to actually run it with sudo permission. So if we run that again, but this time say sudo and then put our password in obviously. If we were to run read link this time and we go from slash bin slash sh and we look at this link now, as you can see, it is now linking to bash. So if I change this back over to what I had before with dash, then this will be set up the way that we want to be doing it in this video. Run that again. As you can see, that is now set up the way that it actually should be set up. So be very, very careful how you do this because you can very easily completely lose your shell and you'll have to basically find some way to reinstall bash or 
Probably the easiest way to do it would be just to reinstall your distro, to be honest, because if you've broken your package manager by doing that, then you'll kind of be stuck. So be very careful, pretty much. That's all I'm saying here. One thing that you probably should have done before you went and actually changed that sim link, you can go back and change it now with the same command we were using before. One thing you should have done is actually check if any of the scripts you use actually use bashisms when they shouldn't be using bashisms. So if they have it marked as slash bin slash sh, and they've actually got bashisms in there. So the way we can do this is with a program called check bashisms. Now you can also do it with like shell check or a bunch of other programs, but on the Arch Linux wiki, it lists check bashisms. So to install that, all we have to do is go sudo pacman dash s check, if I can spell, check bashisms. And I've already got this installed, so we'll just go yes and let that go. Now the script we're going to run, or this command we're going to run, is basically this here. This will pretty much just check everything in your user bin directory and check if it has bashes in it basically. Now I ran this before and I did actually have a bunch of things in here. As you can see there's a bunch of stuff coming down now. I haven't actually run into any serious problems with this though. I don't know if it's just because they're not actually bashisms or if they're just not fatal problems or what's going on here. But it says there's a bunch of possible bashisms in my slash user slash bin directory. But it hasn't been a problem so I'm not sure what's going on there. Maybe I just haven't had to run any of these programs or maybe I haven't had the problems bubble up. But for me, it's been pretty safe. Like even things like my XDG settings or XDG desktop icon or XDG mime even, all of these things still work perfectly fine. I don't know if check bashisms just doesn't work properly or if these aren't actually real problems. So this is just going to go through everything that you have. And obviously the more programs you install, the bigger the problem is going to be. So if you actually run into any serious problems, then you're going to be stuck using bash. But at least on my system, it hasn't been a problem. And you know what I do on my system. I install thousands of packages. And if I don't have a problem, then you'll probably be pretty safe. But once again, don't quote me on that. It may be a problem on your system. Now, there's one other thing we need to do. So on Arch Linux, when you update Bash, what it's going to do is actually fix that sim link. So that's a bit of a problem because then what you're going to have to do is actually change that sim link back every single time you update Bash. But lucky for you, there's actually a way that you can automate this and this is with a Pac-Man hook. So if we go down a bit further, as we can see here, there's basically this Pac-Man hook script. Pretty much what this is going to do is hook onto the install and the upgrade things and its target is going to be for bash and basically what it's going to do is exec that thing we did before. So it's going to exec slash user slash bin slash ln with the dash s, f and capital T options with dash and then fix that slash user slash bin slash sh sim link. And what this is going to do is basically every single time that bash upgrades or you try to install it, it'll just fix the sim link. Now we can do this manually or we can install this random AUR package that does this for us. But it's, it's such an easy thing, we might as well actually do this ourselves. So pretty much all I did was copy this, and then if we look where Pac-Man hooks are actually installed, so if we look on the Pac-Man hook page, as we can see they're stored in the slash user slash share slash level pm slash hooks directory. So let's just have a look at that. Slash user slash share slash libel slash hooks. And if we look in here, I've got it just called, I think, bash, bash dash update. And basically, this is that hook that we just saw before. It doesn't actually matter what you call this hook, but if you ever want to go back and modify it, give it a name that actually makes sense to actually find it. So this is why it's basically bash dash update. Now, if we want to test this, pretty much all we have to do is try to reinstall bash and see if it works. So sudo pacman dash s and try to install bash. Okay, everything seems to be good. And if we run that, as you can see right here, it's repointing slash bin slash sh sim link to dash. Works as we would expect. So doing all of this will actually make sure the problem is fixed and stays fixed because you don't want to really have it so bash will go and change your sim link every time it tries to update. I know that someone's probably going to ask for a benchmark, but the difference between bash and dash on my system is pretty much non-existent just because if you're on any reasonably fast hardware, it's not really going to be too noticeable. 
If you were on an older ThinkPad though, it should already feel like your system is just a little bit quicker. Now it's not going to be super quick, but it's just going to feel like your terminal is just that tiny, tiny bit snappier, which is pretty much all Dash is going to do. Some people will say it's a massive improvement. I never really noticed something that massive, but the big improvement for me is making it so my scripts now have to actually be POSIX scripts when I say they're POSIX scripts. If I mark it as slash bin slash bash, that's fine. I can actually use my bash scripts then, but if I don't, then it actually has to be a POSIX script. Before I go, I just want to thank my patrons. So a special thank you to Nathan, Andrew, Road, LQ, Larry, Ray, and Zill. They help make this channel possible. Without the support, I wouldn't be doing this as well today. So if you want to support the channel, there'll be a link to my Patreon down below. Feel free to check that out. I've also got my Amazon affiliate links, as well as some other stuff down there as well if you want to use any of those. Also remember to smash the like button and leave me a comment down below. And remember to subscribe and ding the little bell icon down below as well. So I think that's pretty much everything for me, and I'm out.